Only on the gallows. This is a man not known to that many people, unless you're a soccer fan, or just somebody with a big heart who's fond of a touching story of a man who came from grass to grace. Soccer players are people that are in the limelight 24-7. Not just on the field, but also off the field. They have to do charity work in their communities. They have to do all sorts of things. Odioni Gallo is no different. He has to represent himself, his community, and his professional club in a way that would dignify him and everyone around him. Odioni Gallo is a man that's famous now for playing for Watford in the English Premier League, but he did not always have this success. He grew up in one of the poorest ghettos in Lagos, Nigeria, known as Akjegunle. He, in that community, it was, it was completely overflowing with gang violence, shootouts with police, and all sorts of drug deals 24-7, all, all times of the day. And although he may be famous now, this is not always the case. In fact, on the 15th of June, 2015, he's quoted as saying, you didn't need extra motivation to succeed when you were born to the hardships and struggles of the ghetto. He's the youngest of seven siblings, but him and his siblings always had a close bond. They always looked out for one another, because if they didn't, who else would? In the streets of Ajegunle, that's a place where if you don't look out for your kin, nobody is, and if you don't look out for them, they could end up dead. So he had to look out for his older siblings, and they did the same for him. He is also quoted in the same article on the 15th of June, 2015, as saying him and his siblings would stand by the canal, look across, and pray for a miracle that would one day take them out of the ghetto. This is very inspiring, not because I have the same, exact same story as him, but because I am also from Lagos, not from a but I'm from Lagos, and I also play soccer. And just knowing that there was someone who came from something so bad, he was counted out his entire life, and he rose to the top of soccer in anywhere in the world is just an inspiring story. It's, what also inspires me about him is how he's also very open about his humble beginnings. A lot of people come from the ground and they don't want to talk about it because they find, they find it embarrassing or shameful about where they come from. But he's very open about the fact that no matter where you come from, all that matters is where you go. The beginning doesn't matter, all that matters is the end of the race. He uses his story to inspire others in every situation that he can find. He has interviews with international papers and international news stations such as Al Jazeera and BBC, as well as local Nigerian stations such as NTA and AIT. And he comes back to Nigeria as many times as he can. He trains with the local people that he played with right from when he was a boy. Even though, they're, even though they don't have proper fields, they play on sand, which is beaches with what people are like used to playing over with over here. He goes back and he plays with them, and he just inspires them by just playing with them. Odion Egalo, while growing up, did not have money to buy a soccer ball. As when he was eight years old, his father didn't even want him to play soccer because his father believed soccer was for the hoodlums, was for the hoodlums on the streets and he wanted to keep Odion and his family as far away from those people as possible. Odion talked about how his mother was the one that, his mother was the one that supported him, even though she sold roadside oranges and roadside fruits on, by the side of the road, she would sit by the side of the road and sell that, and that was all that he, she used to take care of him and his seven siblings. He is quoted on the 15th of June, also 2015, as saying, from the little money she had, I got my first football boots and the cash to travel with the grassroots team, Olodi Warriors, to our matches. This, playing with the Olodi Warriors, was, is not something that many people would think, oh, that's such a big deal. But to him, that was a breakthrough for him. That was where he first started meeting players who were dedicated to playing soccer, who would play every day of their lives. And this inspired him, oh wow, these men are doing something, they're doing something so great, even in the midst of this, this hardship. So he decided that, I would do it and I would best them. Odion is a man that is very lucky to be alive and he doesn't take this for granted. As many times as he can, he says that it's as much luck as it is the fact that God was just watching over him and his siblings and his life. His practice field where he trained the Olodi Warriors was right on the street corner along with drug dealers, gang members, and all sorts of various 
criminals. His practice field was known for being right in the middle of where the police raids would take place. Because when police would, when the police would, when the police would raid the street corners, he, they would have to run through the field, and then people would get shot at, and they would have to run for cover. In fact, just a few days ago, he is quoted as saying, "He is quoted as saying that he intends on building an orphanage in Lagos to be ready by 2018." This shows that this shows that he has not forgotten his roots, and he does everything he can to still better the lives of the place where he brought up, where he was brought up. In conclusion, Odio Nigallo his rise from grass to grace or from rags to riches is an amazing story that's inspired my life and I hope it inspires all of you.